Hi. I want to dedicate a memory to this uh, Arthur James Craver, who was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. He is a young boy who did not get allowances, did not complain. He had no TV, no cell phones, and no iPod, no Game Boy, or anything like that. He had friends, and they were good friends, a few boys. Uh, at an early age, he came down with scarlet fever and was very sick. He had to be in a room with a red cloth over the door, and the apartment was quarantined. He lived with his brother and two younger sisters, and they could not see him all the time he was sick. And he was a very cheerful boy, though. And he was in grade school. He had the highest grades through every year of school that he won a scholarship. And uh, he would never get to use the scholarship. His father died at the age of 35 and left Art as the breadwinner, they would say, the man of the house. Um, let's see. It was hard for Art because it would be before school, he had a paper route, and he delivered baked goods from a bakery about eight blocks away, Swissler's Bakery. It was a German bakery. And any odd jobs he could get, and every penny went to his mom to pay bills and to support the family. And he was still cheerful. He never complained. He, he just wanted to help. Uh, but as many friends, they would just goof around, play, and, and not like nowadays, but uh, uh, there was a construction going up in a factory. They were playing there. The guys were jumping in the straw and stuff like that. And they said, come on, Art, show us how uh, you dive in for swimming. So nothing ever happened to the other kids. They were lucky. But when uh, Art do dove into the water, and excuse me, not water, into the straw like he would the water, he couldn't move. The boys found a big board to carry him home. I believe there were six boys because they said there were three on each side. Uh, Art was very tall. He was six foot tall and uh, uh, maybe about 150 pounds or so. So they carried him home. He ended up in a hospital, which was not a very good hospital because they treated him like crap. The nurses would be flirting with the doctors in the hall. Yes, it was seen by the mother and his sister. And he was catheterized or whatever. The bottle of urine was always overflowing when the mom came. And he was in a room by himself, and it stunk to high heaven. And the mother would push the daughter out in the hall and say, get out of here, and she would clean it up. So that was the first hospital. They even caught um, the nurse feeding him hot soup. Uh, and th they didn't care if they hurt the kid. They said, he has no feelings anyway. It was, it, it was just a crying shame to see all this. And the mother had to endure all this. And But what could she do? So then uh, one day, uh, all of a sudden, a Christian brother, a Lexan brother, uh, showed up. And he says, why do you keep him here? And the mom said, well, she can't afford to put him in any other hospital. And uh, he says, well... Would it be all right if we took him to a Lexington Brothers Hospital? She says, well, she has no money to pay for it. And he says, don't worry about it. It will be taken care of. At, and it would be no charge. And there he was treated like a human being. Um, the, oh, the newspaper started to uh, pick the story up of what happened. Uh, the Daily News and uh, other papers. And um, they wrote stories about him. He was given uh, a TV by a neighbor, I believe, and it was installed, everything for no charge, to go on the ceiling so he could watch the Cubs, his favorite, favorite team, the Cubs. And uh, he was given a canary, so he would whistle along with the canary. That kept him very happy. And um, uh, let's see. Oh, his different candies were sent to him. 
And then they heard that he always wanted to be a Boy Scout. So uh, they gave him lessons uh, to be a Boy Scout. And it's like he came to life. And let's see, what else was there? Oh, yeah, the main thing was when the Cubs heard about this and his favorite uh, team and all that, they came to see him in the hospital. And they brought him a hard ball, a baseball, and they gave that to him. And that he was so thrilled. He never, never did complain. It, these people made him happy in this other hospital. Uh, there was no such thing as food stamps, welfare, food pantries, or anything like that in the, these days. Because this was a few years back, around 47. Yeah, 1947 or something. Um, but, uh, 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 the family did get some help later on, uh, from the Salvation Army, bless them. Uh, let's see, um, a mom didn't a uh, the mother didn't ask about it. They, some reason they just came and they were helping. Um, this boy, Arthur James Craver, said he had a visit from God. And after 18 months of suffering, being paralyzed, you know, well, the Christian brothers listened to this. And he, he told them the date that God was going to take them home. The date, the time, the, to the minute, to the second. Well, all of a sudden, when that time came, there were many Christian brothers uh, in that room praying. And I believe there was a bishop, too. Uh, but the whole room was full of them praying to see what happened. And um, uh, let's see what happened then. Um, oh, yes. Uh, the, it happened to be that this was supposed to be at night. That, uh, And it was. It was, um, what was it, 11.15 uh, p.m. And all of a sudden, the room got bright. There was a bright light coming through the window, like the sun was coming in. And Arthur looked at that window and just smiled. And he, he said, God has come for me to take me home. Uh, <clears throat> Art would be 82 years old, September 7th, 2013. He was in a hospital when he was 15 years old. His weight dropped from 150 pounds to 70 pounds. He was all just bones. And the, like I said, the Daily News, and I don't know what other newspapers covered this whole story, but it was covered. And this Bishop uh, Bernard um, J. Was it Shell? S H E L L. And this uh, Reverend Joseph Megan, I believe, M-E-E-G-A-N, were very interested in him. Uh, he, they said he was an outstanding boy. And they were just very interested. But can you imagine this boy with nothing that the kids have today? And all he did for his mother. He didn't take advantage of anything. He paid what was due. And we all know where he is now. And just a memory. I do believe he is a saint.